Hello, welcome to Poker Nights. This is a submission video for the board and card game design contest for Square Shooters, That's How I Roll. Poker Nights is a card battling, betting and bluffing game using the trademark Square Shooters Dice. In this game, um, players will assume the role of one of the houses represented by a suit in the standard poker deck and will play that suit to gather armies of knights and spies to compete against each other for the title of High King and gain the most influence over the land. I've described it as Poker meets Game of Thrones. In this game, players will go around and take turns going through a series of phases that will allow them to draw dice, manipulate them, bet, and assume, uh, put, position themselves for um, taking home the cash prize of the tournament for that round. So let's take a look at the different phases in a round. This is a reference card that all players will have available to them throughout the game. It is on the back of a superpower ability that uh, players will have access to, and once used, this will be turned face down so that this is permanently up. But it can be referenced at any time. The different phases are applicable for every round, and start with a preparation, or a basic setup of the round. Then you'll go to the knight's phase, where players will build armies of knights that they can use in different areas of the uh, battlefield or in the tournament. Then there's the spy phase where players will gain armies of, of spies and they'll be able to recruit spies and, and uh, use spies that have already been planted in other houses. And then there's the resolution phase where players will resolve all of the dice setups that they've configured throughout the round and a winner of the tournament for that round will be claimed. So the intent of this video is to walk through one round to give us an example of how a round would play and uh, help to illustrate the concepts of the game. So first we start with the preparation phase. In preparation, the first player token is first passed to the left, to the next clockwise player. This represents which player will be betting and placing their dice first in each uh, phase of this round. Then the pot is created or added to with three chips from the treasury. Finally, all of the square tutor dice are collected and placed into a bag to be drawn out in the two phases, knights and, sp and spies. So we've completed the, the preparation phase now, and we're moving into the knights phase. In the knights phase, a number of dice will be drawn out specifically designed for the number of players that are currently participating in the game. You can see here I've set up a three-player game because three of these positions have a card and a superpower that are available to them in the game. You have the diamonds player, the hearts player, the spades player, and then the, I'm sorry, this is the clubs player, and then the spades player is being represented by an artificial intelligence that will act automatically throughout the game. And that's so to allow dice that are rolled in that suit to be used. So in a three player game, we will draw six dice from the bag for the knights, leaving three remaining for the spy phase. So here are my six dice, and I roll them, and then I divide them up according to the suits. So here you have the club, spade, diamond, spade, and two hearts. If there had been a uh, joker rolled, then the player who got the least number of dice or in a tie, the lowest value die, would re-roll the joker along with another die of their choice. So here all the dice are set up, and at this point, we now go into the betting portion of the knight phase. So both the knight's phase and the spy phase have three steps that are common between them. Draw, where you draw dice. Bet, bet on who you think the winner of this round is going to be. And place the die that you uh, have drawn through this round. So here we're working on the knight's betting phase. So now looking at the dice around us, we're going to look and see which one do we think is going to win the tournament. And the way we can determine that is by looking at chains of dice. A chain of dice is represented by dice in a sequential order. This is a perfect example, a seven, eight. So this would be a chain of two, whereas a two, seven would be two individual chains of one each. And obviously these would be chains of one. So at this point, the, the winner of the tournament would be the hearts player because they have the longest and highest chain, a chain of two with a seven, eight. So the only way someone else can beat them is by creating a longer chain or a chain of two with a higher value. So at this point, 
the first player is going to look at the dice around and say, which is all public information, and they're going to say which one they want to bet on. A player can bet one to three chips on any house, either themselves, the AI player, or any of the other players. To, to place a bet, take some of their chips from one to three, and you place it on one of the corners of the planning card on which house you think is going to win. So in this case, the club's player would think, oh, the, the hearts has a pretty good lead here. I'm going to put my maximum bet of three chips on the hearts player. Okay, then we would skip the AI player, they do not bet, and go to the diamond player. Diamond is thinking the same, but they also have a 10 here, and if they can create a straight or create a chain that uses that 10, it will give them an advantage. So they're going to hold back on betting, and in order to pass on betting, you would have to take one of your chips and place it in the keep. You can get this chip back at the end of the round if no one takes it from you, but you'll have to defend it if anyone tries to raid you. And the raiding takes place in the resolution phase. Next, we go back to the hearts player. Heart says, yep, I've got a chain going. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to bet my maximum bet on myself. Okay, so now all the bets are placed, and we begin to look at the next portion of the knight's phase, which is the placement. So now we're going to place, go around, starting again with the first player, place all of their die in order. So starting with club, club can decide which one of the portions of the planning card they would like to place their die in. There are four possible locations here. You can submit your die to the tournament to compete for the prize in the middle. You can attack left or right neighbor in order to take chips from them, including any that are in their keep. Or you can defend your keep to uh, repel people who are attacking you on the other side. So at this point, the club's player says, well, I don't really have a very good chance of submitting to the tournament, so I'm going to attack uh, with my five against the AI player and place their die there. The AI player acts automatically, placing its highest chain into the tournament. In this case, it would be the seven. Okay, then we go back here to the diamonds player. The diamond is going to try and predict that they might get a, another die that they can use to build on this 10, and they're going to submit this 10 to the tournament. Also, eight is planning on submitting to the tournament so that they can use their existing chain to try and compete. All right. Clubs doesn't have any more die. Back to the AI player. The AI player places their second highest chain, or their second highest die, into the keep. The keep can only contain one die, so it, you don't put chains into the uh, keep because whatever is in the keep automatically repels anything, even chains, that don't have a die value, of at least one die value, higher than the chain, uh, higher than the dice in the keep. So obviously a two is not going to do much help. If it was a, at least a 7 or an 8, then you could repel anything that was lower than that. Okay, 10 has used all their dice, and Heart is going to build on their chain in the tournament. Okay, this completes the placement of the Knight's Phase, and the Knight's Phase is now complete. So we did a draw, a bet, and a place. Now we're going to do the same draw, bet, place for the Spies. To do the Spies, we're going to go back to the bag, and each player is going to secretly draw one die from the bag. And when I say secretly, I mean the dice is going to be drawn and kept in the palm of your hand to prevent any player from seeing what it is that's been drawn. You can examine all the sides of your die, but this die is not rolled. You're going to use this die on any of the sides that you want to manipulate the way the board is, is laid out, and I'll explain how that works in a minute. So each player would draw a spy die, and they would keep it secret to themselves. Just going to set these out here because I don't have enough hands to hold three die. Okay, so now all players would be have, holding their spy die in their hand and examining it, examining it secretly. With a spy die, you can do one of two things: you can either make or break a chain on your own on your own planning card, or you can make or break a chain on an opponent's card. Now, what do I mean by make or break? So, on your own planning card, you would use these uh, sides of the die to um, either create a new chain or 
to add onto an existing chain that you have on one of your areas of your planning card. The sides of this die represent agents that you have implanted into the different houses of the uh, of the world here, including agents that belong to your to your own. So you can use any of these agents, recall them from their undercover missions to come back to you and aid you um, in this in this battle. So you, if you were say the Hearts player, which is this this die, you can use any of these sides as your own suit. So we have a ten here. We're looking. We would be looking for something else that could build on that ten to create a chain. It doesn't necessarily have to be of Hearts. So here we have. Another 10, queen, a king, a two, and eight. So because we can use other values from other suits, we can do duplicates as well as straights. So this double 10 here would act as a chain. Moving on to the hearts player, they'd be looking for something that could continue their chain like this nine, for example, would be perfect. It's a diamond, but they could use it for their own suit uh, to build on their existing chain. So that's what building on your own chains does. You can either create a new chain in one of the other areas or add onto an existing one using any side, or you can use the side in the, use the agent in the house it's implanted into. So for example, um, this is the diamonds die. They can use any of these sides to make or break one of their opponent's chains, but it has to be the, the, the suit that's shown because that's where the agent is implanted. So for example, um, they, if uh, the heart player had um, bet very heavily on club, for example, and they want a club to win, they could try and use one of the club sides to build on an existing chain um, for clubs and try and help them along. Or if one of these uh, sides was trying to win and this uh, player didn't want that, they could break their chain by overriding it with one of the other values of the same suit. So for example, Hearts here knows that the diamond player, if they can build on their chain with a 10, then they are going to have a chain of a higher value than theirs. So if they wanted to, they can either build on their own chain or they can break an opponent's chain by overriding it with the same suit die the same suit face. So this 10 could be overrode to become a 4. And again, you could also use it to make a chain by starting a new one or adding on to another one. So if this was a 9 of diamonds, for example, then you could... No, perfect. So if this is a 9 of diamonds, you could add on to that chain if you wanted this player to win. So that's the different options for the spy diets. Make or break on either your own or an opponent's chain. So each player will look at their own die secretly and they'll start with, uh, that's the draw part. Now they're gonna do another round of betting, starting with the first player. So the club's player is gonna look at their die and say, okay, well, I have a joker here. A joker means that I can use this value for anything I want. It can be any suit, it can be any value. So I could use it to build anyone else anyone else up or break them down, or I can create a new chain for myself. But because their fives are allocated here, the best they could do is create an ace of their own suit that could go into the tournament. So um, they're probably going to end up trying to prevent one of the other players from winning. So in this case, mm, they're not really sure who they want, how they want to bet, but they think hearts might still have it. So they're going to play it safe and put one chip in the keep. We skip the AI player, going on to diamonds. The diamond player says, All right, I've got this uh, 10 here. I'm going to use to double up on my existing 10 to create a chain. So I think I've got, I think I can beat the hearts player. So I'm going to bet two chips on myself. Heart says, I can add on to my existing chain to make it a triple chain. So I think I've got a really good chance. I'm going to place my maximum bet of three on hearts. Okay, now all the bets have been completed and now we go on to the placement. This person is the first player again, so they will be the first one to place their die. So they're going to take their 
Joker, and they're going to override, say, this 8 and make it a 2. So they can try and prevent the Hearts player from winning. Actually, that wouldn't make much sense because they bet on the, on the Hearts player and they want the Hearts player to win. So instead of doing that, then they could override, they could try and add to it and say, I want the Hearts player to win, so I'm going to add here, making that a, uh, a 9. 7, 8, 9. Okay. So then it would go on to Diamond's player. Diamond says, okay, well, I see now that even if I were to double up on my 10s, I can't beat a triple, a triple chain. So I would need, I'm going to have to take some sort of action to try and bring them back down. Uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to try and take one of their sides and override one of these. So we need a heart. Here we go. We have a 5 and we have a 10. Now the 10 wouldn't be very good because you're going to be adding on to that. So we're going to take the 5 and we're going to break their chain, placing it in the middle. So now you have a 7, a 5, and a 9. So that's not a sequential chain anymore, so the chain is broken, making it three individual values of, of one length chain. And so at this point, diamond is winning. So now it comes back to hearts play and they see that their chain has been broken. They have a 7, 5, 9. And so they say, okay, well, what can I do with my die that would get me back into the running here and try and beat this 10? Well, I have an ace here. So even if I submit just one ace, it's going to beat that 10. So I'm going to do that. So they're creating a new chain. It's not adding on to any existing chain. So it's a chain of one, but it's higher than the 10. So now we've done all the placement, and now we go on to the resolution phase. So in this case, we have an ace here. Nothing here, a 7 here, and a 10 here. So the ace would win. So the ace claims the pot. And now we look at the, all the bets that have ma been made. And if any bets were placed on the winning player, then they're paid out from the treasury. So hearts was winning. So this guy bet 6 on himself, so he would take 6 from the treasury. And this guy bet 3, so he would take 3 from the treasury. And this guy bet uh, on diamonds, which he did not win, so he would lose these chips and they would go into the pot for the next round. Okay, now that we've done all of the betting, now we would do raiding. Um, and so the only person who is conducting a raid is the clubs player, and they have a five here going against the AI player. So the five will beat the two, so they're going to take one chip from the treasury and add that to theirs. If they were attacking another player, it would come from the player's pool. Um, if this had been, say, a, uh, a 6, and the player was attacking with a 5, it would be unsuccessful, and they would not get any chips. However, if uh, they were attacking, even if they were attacking with, like, a 2, 3, 4, 5, and this was a 6, you still wouldn't be able to take this, because this, you have to have at least one value of the attacking die that's greater than the value in the keep. Now, if you were successful in raiding with a chain, say, a, a triple chain, you would get one die for each, one chip for each die, and you would double it uh, because you're using a chain. So instead of getting three, you would get six. Also, if there were any chips in the keep, they would take those as well, in addition to what else, whatever they would earn from the uh, from the the rating itself. So now, because no one took this chip, it's returned to the owner, and the same here, which completes the resolution phase. So now we've completed one full round, and this would begin again on the next round to go for um, another round of the tournament. So we go back to the preparation phase where we would pass the first player token to the next human player. We would add three chips from the treasury into the pot, and then we would gather up all of the die to place into the bag and re-roll again. This would continue round after round until one of the chips that's being added of the three is this blue, this blue chip here representing the king's crown, the high king's crown. Once this um, chip is claimed by any of the players, it triggers the end of the game. It's worth 10 points and, uh, instead of the standard one for every all the others. Um, and once this is claimed by any player, um, all of the values of, influ of the influence are totaled and the winner is determined based on that. So it's not necessarily whoever wins this, it's whoever has the highest when this is claimed. Because either they're going to rule as the king with the most influence, 
or have influence over the king as they rule. So that completes our walkthrough of a single round of Poker Nights with a general overview of the game. Um, I would love to hear if you have any questions or thoughts. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and uh, good luck to all the other contestants participating. Thank you.